So I uh, welcome everyone to this webinar on sustainability governance in higher education, what matters. Um, it's really a pleasure for me to, um, to be here uh, with all of you. And it's a big pleasure for me to uh, meet actually former colleagues of mine, uh, Mara Bauer and Marco Rietmann who I had the chance to work with uh, during 2017 in, in, at the University of Fechta. And that is also then how I got to know uh, their work about in that project in Germany. This is uh, uh, yeah, a relatively, maybe one of the biggest also network projects on sustainability in higher education, the project Hoch N. Um, and Marco and Mara are both part of that uh, project, and uh, in the and they are in the in the working package on governance, on sustainability governance. So that was also how I learned about the project, how I also learned a little bit about governance, and both of them also apply, um, yeah, many issues related to governance in their work at the University of Fechter, where, where they are both working at. And so that was the idea then, or then this idea came up um, to, to have a webinar with them. And so thank you for again for accepting the invitation. And uh, I also, I'm also very happy to introduce Anna Carla Madeira. Uh, Anna Carla is a colleague uh, from the uh, uh, faculty of, uh, now it's always strange to say it in English, of the in engineering science uh, from University of... Faculty of Engineer of the University of Porto. of Porto. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ana Carla. It's always uh, because we are so used to say it always in Portuguese. So I'm not used to the English abbreviation. Um, Ana Carla is uh, working there in the um, kind, you can say, commissariat, you would say like a sustainability coordinator of, of that faculty. And uh, she, so she, her work also touches on many aspects related uh, to governance. And Ana Carla kindly also agreed to join this webinar today and in order that we can have some experiences from Germany and also from Portugal and uh, then exchange uh, ideas, impressions, thoughts on this topic. Um, then I also would like to uh, um, welcome and at least introduce uh, Professor Gomes Martins. I just said in the beginning, uh, he is the one who yeah, made the decisive step to create the, the Portuguese Network Sustainable Campus. He is also the host of, of this webinar today um, and helping kindly here with the logistics of letting more participants in, eventually also having an eye, extra eye on the chat. Um, and thank you for that. Yeah, and myself, my name is Antje, Antje Diesteft. I'm also German, but I already live actually in Portugal since 2006 with one year interruption where I worked in Germany with Marco and Mara. And um, yeah, it's, it's my pleasure here to, um, to moderate today this webinar. I'm part also of the um, executive commission of the Sustainable um, Campus Network of Rede Campus uh, Sustentável and part of the working group on governance in higher education. Actually, that's the part that was still missing. Ana Carla Madeira, Professor Gomes Martins and me, we are all part of that working group and uh, as in our network, the idea is to um, promote specific aspects uh, related to sustainability among these many broad fields. Um, we have uh, 10 working groups and governance is one of them. And in order that we can um, get a little bit more into depth, we, we thought that webinars is a nice opportunity to um, get inspiration from from different speakers and this is why we are here today yeah and a big welcome to the audience okay and i think now we are already yeah, really growing 30 people i already see online and then i would say i pass the word to ah oh, no before i will just quickly say uh, about the structure of today of the webinar 
So in total, we uh, we should not take longer than one uh, and a half hours. So at uh, five, uh, three thirty Portuguese time, we should finish eventually a little earlier, depending on the number of questions. And we start with the first block where Mara and Marco will uh, um, tell us about their experience from the project Hoch N and also maybe practical examples from University of Fechter. We have, will have then a part for, of question and answers um, after their first uh, speech. And then we pass on to Anna Carla Madeira, who will talk about uh, her um, experiences at, at FEOP, at her faculty of uh, engineering in uh, Unidad do Porto. And at the end, we can then still um, have some dialogue or debate, uh, seeing if we have still further, further questions to all speakers. All right. So, and any questions in between, I would suggest to write them in the chat. And who is not speaking, I would like to invite them to mute, but I already see that most of you are all muted. I think that will help them to have a good quality in our connection here. Okay, thanks again. And Mara and Marco, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, hello everybody also from our side and thank you very much for inviting us and thank you very much Antje especially for introducing us and getting uh, that all started. Yeah, so I will try to share my screen and as we will use a short um, presentation. Let me just see here it is. Yeah, it will take some seconds. As I said in the beginning, uh, this computer is always a bit slow when starting the sharing process, but give me some seconds. So now I hope you should see the screen sharing. Uh, well, yeah, just before handing over to, to Mara, uh, thank you very much again. And as Antje already said, we are from the University of Fechter in Northern Germany. Um, it's a quite small university, uh, about 4,000 students, but we have been part the last four years of a big national network on sustainability at universities. And yeah, as Antje already said, we will uh, first introduce uh, our network project and some results from that bigger project. And then we'll speak a little bit about what is going on at our university, especially related to sustainability governance. And yeah, Antje, uh, Antje Mara, I would like to hand over to you there. Thank you very much. Um, Hi, everybody. I'm also happy to be here this afternoon and talk to you again about sustainability governance at higher education institutions. Um, and yeah, I guess we should just get right into it. Um, could you well, proceed to the next? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so just I uh, would just give a quick overview on, on the project that uh, Antje and Marco has already talked about. Um, it's, um, well, the English title is Sustainability at Higher Education Institutions Develop Network Report. And um, well, it consists of 11 partner um, institutions and they are all involved in uh, six different um, fields um, of uh, sustainability. Um, at higher education institutions. And uh, so, um, yeah, different aspects of that are uh, worked on within the project um, from so different perspectives come together. And um, yeah, I will, that's probably best shown in the next slide. I will just um, once again stress that our work package that Marco and I have been working on with uh, colleagues from Berlin since December 2016 is the um, field of governance. And um, yes, we will uh, show you some of our um, insights that we got from there, from talking to um, several members of the institutions um, uh, that were involved in the project and um, how they um, implement and process sustainability or sustainable development and their 
institutions. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to show today. And Marco will then um, tell a bit more about the process that we ourselves are involved in at the University of Fechter. So, next slide, please. <laughs> Yeah, that's just a quick overview there. You can see the different fields uh, that the project is covering and also the universities that are involved. Um, I would not name them all separately now. You just, you get the impression, I guess. And then there's also, um, yeah, one, uh, one part of the project is also the and network so that is, has been growing over the last few years. Um, as a network for singular people, but also uh, universities um, as a whole that can join there and um, yeah, exchange their experiences and things like that. So um, the next slide then to get right into the whole um, study that we did, um, we um, conducted interviews with 61 stakeholders in 2017 mainly and um, they all stem from uh, different status groups at the 11 partner HEIs of Hoch M. Um, that would be the students or and scientific staff, administrative and technical staff and the sustainability officers or coordinators, however you want to call them, and then people from the top management and that would be of every single uh, of the 11 HIs, we have had at least one of the, those groups represented in the study. Um, yeah, we asked them all sorts of questions on, uh, on their um, individual sustainability governance. And um, probably not surprisingly, uh, we realized that, well, there is not a general concept for successful sustainability governance, but um, there are so many different factors. Every uh, university has their own um, factors to uh, be accounted for. And um, yeah, for example, as our university is a really small one with, uh, like short ways of connecting with with people and also like for example the top management that is always uh, available uh, to to talk to about the the issues of sustainability um it, it creates a different uh, setting to start from certainly than at a, at a huge agi that has uh, several fields and uh, subjects and whatever um, and maybe even different uh, locations um, yeah, in a, in a huge city, for example. So um, obviously they have to have different measures to get sustainability uh, into, um, yeah, spread out through their, um, through the whole institution, if that is what they're aiming for. Um, yeah, so, so one main outcome from uh, our study is as a guide that we prepared and the other working package is prepared their own guides as well, but only one other I think is available in English. Um, ours uh, fortunately is and it's called sustainability governance at higher education institutions. And um, so I just recommend you to <laughs> um, to have a look into that one. Um, well, we certainly can um, pass on the, the slides for you to um, then get a look into that and to find all the links um, that are also um, prepared on the last slide for you. And yeah, one part of this guide is um, a self appraisal tool for structures and processes that might be interesting um, for any practitioner at a university um, who likes to introduce some more sustainability development measures into their governance structures. Uh, yeah, next slide. And I will just um, start, um, I will now give you some examples um, of what sustainability governance, at least as we found it um, in, in the 11 German cases, um, is, is comprised of or is what is central for it. Um, and 
there's for one thing certainly the sustainability officers or coordinators um, but uh, this is already where it starts where yeah, the other setups can be really um, uh, diverse and sustainability officers can have all kinds of different or take different forms so to speak and and be for example in our case um, have a professor just like um, having the mandate for sustainability and being the well, the spokesperson maybe for it and then others have a whole bureau for um, um, and, and a whole team for uh, sustainability and um, yeah so that's we came across very different setups for um, what sustainability coordinator officer means and then there's the um, yeah, something that many um, HS already installed is um, a steering committee. Um, that is usually a bigger group of people from all over the university um, that come together on a regular basis and just and, and try to discuss and shape the process um, of the sustainability activities. Um, yeah. And then um, another aspect of governance is certainly also um, the mission statements or other official declarations. Um, so a way of mainly for the whole university and the um, top management to announce their will to to implement sustainability and yeah, and their different ways to do that just with their own personal individual mission, mission statement or maybe also with the, another declaration and she also already mentioned the letter of intent that is used in Portugal so um, yeah that would be one thing to do as well and then um, yeah then there's of course sustainability reporting which is the whole subject for itself certainly but uh, we also found it an, an immense a factor when it comes to governance as uh, usually only the process of um, yeah, realizing a report on sustainability of a university um, yeah, forces people to, to engage many others of the university in order to get all the information that is needed uh, to have a full report. And so this, we, we found this to be a really um, interesting way uh, of, of uh, involving people and yeah it can be done in, in quite different perspectives certainly there's also university in Germany where uh, students um, initiated this process and um, yeah you can, you can certainly find different ways to do that um, yep and um, then there's another like the fifth uh, aspect that I picked out for today it would be the qualification activities which uh, can certainly address um, teachers as well as students um, and offer SD or sustainable development related courses, um, certificates, um, some even have obligatory courses for students um, that uh, focus on sustainability. So there's also a big variety on what uh, HEIs can do to uh, have uh, their students and staff um, qualified uh, for the task of sustainable development implementation. Yes, thanks, Marco. You go ahead. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you, Mara. And so now, based on that information, I would like to use more or less the same examples, but now to describe uh, how that process went in, in Fechte briefly. So the whole process at our university, and I mentioned already, it's a small one, just uh, between 4,000, 5,000 students, one of the smallest universities in, in Germany, I guess, and, and also with a particular focus on so social sciences. So we do not offer engineering or we do not do not have a medicine or law school. It's really focusing basically on social and educational sciences. And so the whole process uh, started six years ago in 2015 
when the president, the former president of the university invited to a series, I think there were two university wide workshops to which all students, lecturers and everybody from the university was invited. And if I remember correctly, in each of the workshops, we had like 50, 60 attendees. So not a very big group, but at least uh, representatives from different groups and different faculties. And it was quite good because there was a lot of motivation of interest uh, in, in the topic. And that process and that mo motivation then led to the foundation of the Sustainable University Working Group, which is uh, an open group which meets every yeah, two or one or two months and since then coordinated, uh, as Mara said, as a kind of a steering group, this group now for six years already is coordinating our sustainability activities. And uh, then also the former president decided that it would make sense to have uh, one responsible, one coordinating person. And so uh, she uh, appointed me as yeah, advisor uh, on sustainability of the university. And so for, since then it was my task to, to lead that working group and to somehow co coordinate the sustainability activities in the university. One of the biggest um, milestones, let's say, of the work of that group during the last years was the development of sustainability guidelines. So in a very participatory process, the group first developed a draft and then we discussed the draft with the president and the whole upper management group. And then in the end, uh, these guidelines were adopted by the University Senate. I will speak a little bit more about that in a minute. And uh, two other elements are uh, to, related to what Mara said, we also initiated already three years ago a, a broad qualification process, oh. a training our lecturers, and I will also come back to that in, in two minutes. And uh, a last and now a very, um, yeah, well, not last one, also an important step based on the sustainability guidelines, then sustainability was also included in other political documents, strategic documents of the university, like for example, the target agreements, that's an agreement between the university and the state of Lower Saxony. And one key element in that agreement is also sustainability. And the yeah, most recent and also very important milestone for us was that just last month, we published our first sustainability report. Well, now going only in some details before concluding, um, I think interesting about that working group is that it is really an open group. So everybody who wants can join the group, can join the meetings. We meet every uh, six to eight weeks, more or less. So yeah, uh, about six times per year. And the activities sometimes are more policy and strategy-led, uh, strategy like developing guidelines, working on the sustainability report. But sometimes they are also quite action oriented, we often organized campaigns, uh, participated in national sustainability events, etc. So that is what this group is doing more or less. Although it is open and everybody could join, there are more or less between five and 15 perhaps persons that are at one meeting. Uh, and so, yeah, more or less about 15, 20 are on the list uh, of the email list, the mailing list of the group. But in each meeting, we would have like, yeah, between five and 10 attendees, perhaps. And interesting is also that the president did not only assign me or appointed me as a sustainability advisor of the university, she also provided me, and that is still the case, with some resources. So I got, get, got university funding for employing. Perfect with a quarter, let's say a quarter working time position, uh, coordinating also this process and helping me with uh, coordinating of the working group. So somebody is not muted yet. So, uh, uh, maybe if someone uh, and professor can mute by force, uh, hopefully it's solved. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Marco. Okay. No problem. So so that was also quite important that we got that got that oh, fun, funding from the university, uh, funding from the university, so that we have also that support. But because, as you can imagine, myself, I have also I'm involved in many projects, so it would be 
uh, would have been quite difficult to coordinate that process on my own. So it was really always a great help to have also uh, some support. And that uh, job, let's say, was done for many years by Mara. And now uh, another colleague uh, took over. And sustainability guidelines, uh, I think that was quite important for us because first they helped us to, as a group, as a working group, to find out what we really want, what are our aims. And second, I think it was quite important because it was also a participatory process in which many members of the university also, uh, well, not many, but some at least, we also had a workshop and uh, the, the upper management discussed it. And so it helped us to, to, uh, to find some joint agreement. What are the important aims for us? And now in these guidelines, and if you are interested to read them in detail, and as Mara said, we can share the presentation and the links, because this information is also available in English on our website. So you could read the, the full guidelines there. They start with this idea saying the University of Fechter embeds the principles of sustainability in all its areas, teaching, research, and campus. So we understand sustainability as a whole institution approach. And that can also be seen in the different parts of the guidelines. They include, they include aims for education, for research, for living on campus and operations, for joint action, what is student initiatives and, and any kind of volunteer engagement on campus. And last but not least, also cooperation and networking. If you're interested in any details, please ask now in the discussion, or as I say, you can find it in English also on our website. That, as I said before, led also to, to the issue that now sustainability is also part of our current target agreements with the state of Lower Saxony, what is quite important because that's the document what is saying what we have to do during the next years uh, or now in between uh, 2019 and 2021. Uh, and so also for us, that was quite important because now we can always say, well, it's not only the guidelines, it's also these official documents uh, which have been signed by the state of law, by the ministry and by the university, which say that we have to implement sustainability and have to create a culture of sustainability. And based on that, it's also part and really a main part and the main key element of our university development plan. As I said already, uh, the first sustainability report was published in December. And I only want to mention here that that was also not only important because now we have that report, uh, which on more or less 40 pages, if I'm not wrong, Mara, includes some information about yeah, all the different activities. That is one was one aim also now that we have a document that presents, unfortunately only in German up to now, um, presents our sustainability act activities in, in detail and with nice layout. So I, I think it's really nice document. But the other aim was also that it helped us for self-reflection and identification of further measures because it was also a quite participatory process. We had a workshop. We sent a questionnaire to all university members. They all could get back to us with their answers, with the ideas about sustainability, with information that should be included in the report. So in the end, it were like a team of five persons who worked more, more permanently on the report, but we tried to include uh, many ideas from many uh, members of the university. So it's really kind of a participatory product. And it is based on the criteria of the university specific German sustainability code, which is a national code for sustainability reporting at universities. So we also use that official document so that it is somehow, well, at least somehow linked to that national standard. You can find the sustainability report at this link, which we also can share, but unfortunately only in, in German. Last but not least, um, that perhaps is not directly part of the governance structure, but nevertheless, I wanted to mention it, as Mara also mentioned, that qualification is also important for the whole process and for the governance structures. Some years ago, we noticed already that especially lecturers are also some, some sometimes have a lack already or would like to know more about sustainability. So we created this uh, training series and it always takes place now uh, since 2018. This year will take place already for the 
fourth time and it always takes place in the summer semester so between April and July and we offer then between five and six workshops each workshop takes like between three and four hours and each workshop is about ESD in general, at least we started with ESD in general, but then from year to year, we became also more specific. And now we offer also um, workshops about specific pedagogies, learning approaches, methods, like, for example, specific type of workshops or design thinking or a future workshop or scenario development, so different methods and pedagogies. And the idea is that this helps us also that more lecturers can include ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, in their classes. And based on that, in each year now since 2018 in November, we uh, decide for one week in which all lecturers are invited to to include in that week sustainability in their classes. Even if their classes is, are about something totally different, they are asked, they are invited, uh, that in this week they somehow try to link their class to sustainability. And if they are not able to do it, we offer them some funding to invite in external experts that that then help them to link their topics to sustainability. And we always have a big public event and so more or less big, but uh, public events. So that's also the idea that uh, this helps to make sustainability more visible and uh, to include it more in our practices. Well, thank you uh, very much. And as Mara said, uh, we have uh, published a lot, especially about our multi-case study on sustainability governance. So it's not only the guidelines that Mara mentioned, but we also published several scientific papers about sustainability governance at universities. So if you're interested, we, as we said before, we can share this presentation. And then if you want to, you can also have a look at these presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mara and Marco, for this very interesting presentation and uh, sharing your experience. Um, so the, I will pass now to our audience. We have actually a really uh, international uh, audience because I think here are people joining from Brazil, from Portugal, from Germany, and I don't know which further countries. Some questions were already written in the chat and I will at least ask the two that I uh, saw already now and others are invited to uh, write further questions in the chat. You can write them in Portuguese if you want. Um, uh, Sandra Caero asks uh, how the sample was uh, uh, selected um, for the 11 uh, universities that are part of the Hoch N project. Um, I know, yeah, one, how did, uh, and how, uh, I think, yeah, how, how samples from each group were selected from the 11, yeah, I think, so she means from the 11 universities that are part of the uh, network of Hoch N, how were the samples uh, selected? That was one shot and the second, the one question and the second question was related to the model of the sustainability report, where I think Marco said in the, in the really at the, at the finishing uh, sentences about the German specific German model, but maybe you can specify a little bit on the selection process and also give eventually some some idea how the German model for sustainability reporting eventually refers to other international known sustainability reporting uh, models. Okay, yeah. please. Yeah, if uh, Mara, if you don't mind, I start perhaps with the sample and then you can go more into the details of the sampling perhaps better than I and also about the code, the national code, I think you are more <laughs> qualified to talk about that. Um, just, well, the, the main issue here is that, uh, or the main information perhaps, that the research project consisted of 11 higher education institutions. And perhaps there I have to mention that the network, the sustainability universities network is quite bigger. And we created such a big network during the last years, but the core of the network is a research project, which uh, consists of 11 universities. And I mean, we could say that the 11 more universities are more or less the most sustainable in Germany, but I think that's true only in some cases. Some of the 11 are really like the, the most active universities in sustainability in Germany, and some of the others, 
are part of the research project because they were interested and they are doing a lot, but perhaps we could not say that all of them are like the most advanced. But you can imagine, I mean, like it is always when then there is some funding, some partners uh, get together and create jointly a research project. So that was what happened. And then when we started our research on governance, we discussed a lot should we use only the 11 universities or should we have another sample, a bigger sample, different universities? And in the end, uh, somehow also because of, uh, well, limitation of resources and time, we decided that at least as a first step, we will do the study just in the 11 universities, which are part of the project, also because of reasons of access to the universities. So still, I would say that the basis of the sampling is that all of these universities are active. They all have started a sustainability process some years ago, but we could have already, uh, we could have done the study also in others. So I could not tell why exactly the 11 and not another university, which perhaps is act as active as these 11. So uh, Sandra, uh, it's kind of a mixture of a, science-based sampling because we could say that they are very advanced and that it made sense to use them but then on the other hand it's also a little bit of a pragmatic sampling i would say mm -hmm. then that inside of the universities i would say it was um, some kind of purposeful uh, sampling uh, because we we then approached uh, the partners and as we had the ex access because we worked with all of them so it, it was easy to approach the universities and to say we want to do that study uh, also with representatives of your uh, university and then we asked them to give us contacts of persons who are part of their process so again here it's important we did not interview people who are not part of the process who are against the process who criticize the process we only interviewed people who are somehow linked to the process who are member of a steering group who are students which are also uh, taking part in the sustainability activities or the director of the president of the university, et cetera. So we only interviewed persons who are somehow part of the process. And as I said, it was somehow purposeful uh, sampling because we, well, we got a list of, of contacts and then we decided, well, there are three students and three professors. So we take at least as Mara explained, one from each group, et cetera. And I don't know if you want to add any detail there, Mara, and then you could also pro hopefully answer that question about the sustainability code. Yeah, no, I guess for the sample, I <laughs> wouldn't add uh, anything um, except uh, if there are any more further questions, of course, um, let us know. Um, uh, yeah, about the code. So the report that um, Marco talked about um, is mainly, well, we, we kind of designed the, the, struc the structure ourselves in order to have something interesting to look at and not just a boring piece of paper, <laughs> if I can be so blunt. And then um, there's also this other part of reporting that we, um, uh, that we used, which is um, yeah, suggested by the the, the German Council for Sustainability, um, which is uh, yeah, the, the German code for, um, I don't know, do you know the, the official English name, Marco? Um, well, but they have a code for sustainability reporting um, and um, we use that one as well, but in, in a different, so in a different, um, set of, of texts and documents that we uploaded on a on a database um, from this uh, Council of Sustainability in Germany. Um, and yeah, so they have uh, 20 criteria that we uh, reported on um, in an encompassing way. And um, yeah, so our sustainability reporting in the end was basically the two phase. We first had those 
uh, 20 rather strict criteria from, from the German code for sustainability reporting. And then we had our uh, maybe more um, and, yeah, interesting to look at a report that we also designed some more. And um, this is, yeah, the, the, those are the two parts that we use, but so we didn't use any international guidelines like GRI, for example. But to add that information, and I have to say I had to look it up because I did not remember, but I just looked it up. Uh, well, what I could remember is that the university specific code is based on the general German code for enterprises. So it's an adaptation of the general German code for enterprises and the general German sustainability code for enterprises itself is based on GRI and the European Federation of Financial Analyst Societies. So to answer your question precisely, Sandra, that would be the answer. So yes, it is linked to GRI. But we didn't use GRI and only directly the German code, but the German code is linked to that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as the time is proceeding, um, I, I received a one more question, but maybe we can keep that question for um, so the general question related to the SDGs. We can um, keep that also for the discussion after Anna Carla's uh, presentation. And I would like to pass the floor now to um, Anna Carla and invite her to share her screen. And yeah, okay. thank, thank you. I will try to share the screen. And after Anna Carla's uh, presentation, you can also again, of course, ask her directly questions. And after that, we will still have some kind of a debate dialogue on um, on both presentations and you can direct questions to all speakers. I think so. now you are watching my presentation, Thank yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. <laughs> so as Antje said, uh, I, I am, my name is Ana Carla Madeira and I'm from the Faculty of Engineer of the University of Porto. And uh, I work, I, one main task is the coordination no. of a sustainability committee. Uh, I would like to thank to my colleagues of the working group for this kind of invitation. It is a great pleasure to participate in this webinar. Uh, now I would like to begin starting my presentation. First, I will talk about, I will make a short description of the Faculty of Engineer of the University of Porto, Philp, and I'd like to present some figures, some figures from Philp. Then I will try to, to start to talk about the uh, paths of the Philp Tower Sustainability and uh, since 2006. Then I will present the strategy for a more sustainable field. And I would like to give some examples of some initiatives uh, in the scope of that strategy. Okay, for the people that are not from, uh, from Portugal, uh, as, as Antje said, there are people from Germany and Brazil, uh, Portugal is here in the south of Europe and uh, the Faculty of Engineer is located at Porto that is in the north of the country here. The Faculty of Engineer is these buildings. Uh, there are new buildings since 2000 is a a big uh, faculty is the largest one of the University of Porto. As you can see, it has about 8,000 of students, one third are female, about 1,300 of staff. This number includes teaching staff, researchers, research fellows, and non academic staff. About one third is female. It has nine departments covering all fields of engineer. And uh, here you can see the campus area and the green area. Okay. 
Now I, I want to start to talk about the path of FIOP towards sustainability. Um, and I would like to, to say uh, that FIOP is a good example of uh, the commitment of the governance bodies. Why? Uh, because uh, since 2006 until 2020, we have, FIOP has um, three deans, three different governance bodies, and all of them were very commitment with sustainability, uh, very engaged with sust sustainable development, and they are, uh, they were the promoter of uh, of the initiatives that were held in, at FIOP. So in 2006, it is a milestone for me because it's the year that uh, FIOP published the first sustainability report. I must say that it was the first Portuguese higher education institution to report sustainability. Uh, then in 2009, FIOP became a member of the International Environmental Association for Universities and Colleges. And uh, this association is hosted in the United Kingdom. What, uh, what was the main goal? It was uh, of FIOP uh, in becoming a member. Uh, the, the goal is to learn and share best practices related with sustainability. This is, as you can see, the membership certificate. I'm sorry. Then uh, another milestone, another important year it was 2012. Uh, and I have to say that this year uh, we have a different team from 2006. And a uh, film and sustainability website was published. And uh, it was an important uh, uh, website because uh, it has uh, two main goals. The first one is to share some information, some indicators related with uh, sustainability. And uh, the other goal is to uh, share some best practices related with uh, more sustainable behaviors. Then we have 2015. And uh, in that, one, that year, it is uh, it was a very important year with another team, another management uh, body. And uh, uh, it was the year of the foundation of sustainability committee uh, with the mission that you can see on the slide. 2019, I, I think it has a, a very important year because it was the year that Philip hosted the first uh, sustainable campus conference promoted by the Net uh, campus sustainable, sustainable Campus Network. And uh, uh, FIOP hosted and, and co-organizes this conference. It is a very important moment because uh, as you can see in this picture, picture uh, 28 leaders of Portuguese higher education institution signed a commitment letter to sustainable development. It was a very important moment for uh, FIOP and for Portugal. Oops. Now I would like to, in 2020, I would like to highlight another important uh, moment that was the uh, FIOP became a member of the Portuguese Pact for Plastics, as you can see in this uh, news newspaper. Now I would like to present the Sustainability Committee. Uh, as you can see in this slide, it has nine members and uh, each, uh, of each one from different uh, parts of of uh, academic committees. Uh, someone, some are from teaching staff, other are, are students, as you can see here, uh, and uh, other are technical and support staff. Um, and I had the concern of uh, 
of, of, of the members uh, have the experience uh, and uh, to, to have the experts of three pillars of sustainability. Some are experts on the economy, other in social and other in the environmental issues. Uh, I must say that we have a, a closely relation with the students. We work a lot with students and they help us uh, in our initiatives, our activities of the committee. Uh, the first main task of the Sustainability Committee was to develop, develop uh, our strategic plan. It was a 20 years uh, strategic plan. I must say that it was a, a very hard task, but a very interesting task too. And this plan is, uh, is aligned with sustainable development goals. Now, our plan has several strategic teams, as you can see, such as teaching and learning, research and development, academic community, and sustainable campus. And of course, all uh, the interactions uh, of field with the old society. Now, uh, I'll, for each, uh, for each, um, for each uh, strategic team, we we define, we establish uh, strategic goals, and uh, I will I would like to, uh, to give some examples, a few examples, uh, because we don't have time. But for instance, for teaching and learning, we have an, an, a goal that is to integrate sustainable development concepts into curriculum. How uh, do, you, do we achieve this goal? We give a lecture uh, to the first year students, for instance, of the first degree. And uh, the main goal is to uh, give them, uh, to raise awareness for sustainable behaviors and to uh, present the activities of the sustainability committee. Then, for instance, we have another in another strategic topic, academic community, we have another goal that is to promote a culture of sustainability in the daily life of the community. To achieve this, we have a contest, more sustainable ideas, as you can see here, uh, that is a regulation. Um, and uh, this contest is, is open for all community from students to staff. And uh, if anyone has an idea to improve the, sustainab the, the sustainability at FIOP, uh, submit an idea. And uh, at the end of the year, uh, the best idea is select. And uh, it wins the, the most sustainable idea of the year. The winners, the winner or the winners, it depends. Uh, uh, wins a bike for the idea. Now, another, another goal is to promote sustainable food. We have a partnership with, uh, uh, so with the Faculty of Nutrition Science and uh, uh, we made some workshops and webinars like this one that you can see here. This is a picture from one of the workshops. Another example of, uh, uh, of the participation of FIOP is uh, included on, on this um, goal that is to promote gender equality. FIOP participates in the project that so-called engineers for one day. And the main goal is to attract girls for engineer programs. Now, I would like to give some examples on sustainable campus team. Uh, so I'll, I would like to highlight shared printers because uh, with shared printers, we uh, have an, an impact, a positive impact on reduction of paper consumptions. And it is a, it is a 
something very important for us. Another example is on uh, efficiency uh, of energy. Energy. We replace some uh, current lighting device with LEDs. And I would like to stress the installation of photovoltaic panels for the production of electricity for self consumption. Another topic that I would like to stress is the recycled bins located in several locations of field, as you can see here. I would like to show uh, the electricity consumption per capita. As you can see, uh, it uh, suffered a decrease since 2015 until now, and is the result of the LEDs that I, I told about. Here you can see the recycled bins at uh, different places of field. And I would like to stress that we have those beans since 2000. Here, another initiative that I'd like to highlight is the promotion is under the, the scope of the goal to promote the use, the use of reusable products. And for this, for achieving this goal, we, we give to first year students a reusable bottle. Also, we have in the vending machines uh, an option that is selection without cup. Uh, you can select this, you take your cup, and the, the, the drink is cheaper uh, than the with cup, of course. Uh, another important initiative is the repairs, repairs cafes that we have organized. Uh, the, the main goal is to give a second chance to the used equipment. Uh, and uh, here is, is a, a picture, is a, a news from the newspaper. And you can see here uh, the pic some picture. Uh, I have to say that students like very much to participate in these activities. And uh, another, uh, the last example that I want to, to give is the promotion of sustainable mobility. Uh, we have some, we have made some studies on mobility to fill, and I would like to, and in 2020, we have held an initiative that is, that was in European Mobility Week. We gave a bottle for anyone that came to fill travels by, by bike in the European Mobility Week. It was a very participating initiative. Well, now uh, I will draw some conclusions. I think higher education institution must inspire a sustainability culture and be themselves a model of sustainability. Also, I, I have to say that Philip has already implemented several activities and contributing for sustainable development. Uh, but I have to say that there are some key factors of success for me, in my point of view. Uh, it is very important the commitment and support of the governance bodies, the engagement of the academic community from students to staff, uh, the existence of integrated policies for the institution with regard to sustainable development and research, human resources and uh, uh, financial resources. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Anna Carla, for this very interesting presentation. So first of all, I want uh, to invite uh, quest to ask questions directly to Anna Carla and to the process of at FEOP, if there are any questions. You, you can you can write them in the chat. So far, I have not seen. Or also, if you prefer asking directly, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask uh, the question directly to Anna Carla. Also in Portuguese, if you might be uh, find it easier. Okay, we can also wait a second. I. Um, um, in between, I would like to ask a question to uh, to Anna Carla. Um, uh, so it's very interesting to see now this example of a really 
big faculty, actually it's not the whole university because Anakala was just talking about one faculty of the whole University of Porto, which uh, is even larger. So it's already just her faculty is double size, more or less than, um, than the University of Fechter, what uh, um, Marco and Mara were uh, talking about, at least from the numbers. And uh, so you also mentioned, actually, I think the different uh, areas um, of um, the sustainable campus, the teaching, uh, the research, you had actually four areas. I would like to uh, ask you if the your institution of EFEOP also understands uh, the approach exactly as a whole institution approach that uh, Marco was also mentioning in integrating the different areas or do you have more uh, the impression it's okay we do something in teaching and we do something at the campus but is there some integration in the end or not so would you say is Philip going for a whole institution approach or are there some difference different understandings eventually that would be my I think question it's the goal to have the integration of all the the topics but uh, I have to say that we are working on that. But uh, I, we have not yet the whole integration. It's, mm. uh, <laughs> we want to. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, and there is now one question. Sandra Kairos asking, for the strategic plan, how was the participation of the different faculty stakeholders? And don't the other faculties of Universidad of Porto Porto want no, to follow I, a good I, example? I just I, I just can talk about from fac my faculty uh, because I don't I don't know what happens in the other one. The other mm -hmm. I only uh, can talk in the name of faculty of engineer mm -hmm. uh, because we have some kind of. Uh, freedom <laughs> and yeah. we are not only integrated uh, on the uh, we have some freedom of uh, we have not freedom the is, is not the bet the better word uh, we have autonomy okay mm -hmm. is the the bet the better word to say and uh, so we, we plan our, and we develop our strategic plan but without the other faculties mm -hmm. But regarding the stakeholders, how with, how uh, did you integrate or how did you involve the different st ah, faculty stakeholders? stakeholders? Okay, uh, yes, we engage some stakeholders. Yes, we we have some discussions and uh, the the strategic plans. Uh, we I think uh, maybe one here in the WAF that we have some discussions uh, with some. Uh, very different kind of people, of stakeholders of the faculty. And uh, uh, it takes about one year and a half uh, to develop uh, the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There are now two more questions um, uh, regarding FEOP. Uh, one is about this, if the strategic plan can be consulted of, uh, online. And the second question is, um, uh, regarding the collaboration established with the outside community, does fail develop long-term programs in partnerships with schools, besides uh, the one about uh, the uh, engineer, uh, female engineers for one day, these uh, engineers for one day, besides that initiatives? Are there other collaboration with schools? With schools, uh, yes, we have... Uh, uh... But, but we have a different kind of collaboration with schools, but I'm not the right person because we have the office, I, 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 I'm the right person for sustainability, but we have a, an office, a communication office that, uh, in, that in, interact directly with the schools and uh, they are the, the right persons to explain how is that uh, interaction. Regarding the the, the strategic plan, uh, yes, uh, I, uh, we have a website, a new website. I think uh, it will be released at uh, in fe February, 
in the next month and the, the, you can consult uh, there the, the strategic plan. Now uh, we have uh, a whole site. <laughs> it isn't not yet, uh, uh, it, it hasn't not yet the, the strategic plan. Uh, but but uh, uh, from February, it is available. Thank you very much. So we have come now to the end of at least the two presentation blocks and uh, I would like to uh, invite all of the audience still to engage with some exchange now to all speakers. You can of course also uh, then uh, ask directly questions, unmute yourself uh, and, um, and switch on your video if you wish or asking questions in the chat. There's one more question that um, I, I um, kept for this moment that is uh, related to our colleagues from, from University of Fechter um, regarding the SDGs. Um, with how many SDGs are you dealing with and is there any form of as associating the activities that you are doing to the SDGs? Well, yes, I mean, not not systematically, because I mean, there is no part in the sustainability report, for example, where we state that are the SDGs we are working with or where it would be shown how the activities relate to different SDGs. So it is a framework we use. And I think in, in different documents of the university, uh, the guidelines or the report, the SDGs are mentioned. Uh, we work with the SDGs in different pro projects, uh, also research projects. For example, we are part of a bigger research project or transfer project on the SDGs and how they can be implemented in the agribusiness sector, the SDGs labs project. But no, we do not have a strategic plan how every activity in the university could be related to the SDGs. It, we have also done some work with students where this and in, in courses, for example, Mara and I taught a course where some of our students worked with the SDGs. So yeah, they are somehow, they are there. We are working with them, but not in a systematic way, I would say. Thank you. Further questions? Antje, if you allow me, could yes, please. Anna uh, answer a similar question? Is there any... Is there any kind of relation mm -hmm. in some activities that developed at FOB with, with uh, the SDGs or any SDGs in a formal way or informal way? I don't yes. know. Yes. Uh, we, for instance, uh, uh, the more sustainable ideas contest, they have to, uh, to say what, uh, what kind of, um, for what, uh, sustainable development goal, the idea contributes, okay? And uh, another example is uh, for, for instance, we have um, uh, a course that is in the, uh, of the first years uh, for the, the, the students of the first years of the first degree to integrate uh, the students. It's called uh, Projeto FILP. And uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, it, 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 uh, this, uh, this uh, course um, is during one week. And uh, the main goal is to integrate the students. And when and, uh, we talk about sustainability in our, in our lecture and uh, about the sustainable goals, and they have to do a work. And we are thinking to, uh, to integrate the sustainable developments on this work. They have to, to, to work for the sustainable development goals in that work. Uh, and uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are guiding our work uh, through the, the sustainable development goals. Uh, we want to work uh, regarding the, our contribution uh, in many aspects of the sustainable development goals. Uh, for instance, we, we want to, uh, to, 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 to know how many uh, research projects, how many courses have uh, contributed in any way to the sustainable development goals, how many uh, scientific publications 
uh, contribute to sustain, uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, we are working on the several ways, on different ways, um, in that uh, for contributing and and to also to uh, raise awareness uh, in the academic community for sustainable development goals. I don't know if. I have answered off. <laughs> is enough? <laughs> yes, thank you, Anna. Thank you. I, I wonder, Adia, if there is no no other question in. Oh no, there, there is a question. One, one if, final at, in the, yeah, if, you, if you look at the at this. In the, the chat, the, yes, the one chat, more question. Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Elsa is asking uh, um, to Ana Carla, do you any evaluate the impact uh, in students and the community? I, probably, I think I understand that she means if you evaluate the, the impact of your work or of, the, of the, the work of the sustainability committee in students and community. No, uh, <laughs> we, we, every day we evaluate, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, for students, we have many collaboration. They, they, we work with them. Uh, it's a, uh, day-to-day uh, -day work, uh, they, they collaborate in our activities and our initiative. And as I told before, we have one uh, student that is from the students' unions uh, of FILP at the board of the Sustainability Committee. And uh, we work with them. Uh, related with the other community, we want, I, I don't know how to evaluate impact, but uh, I don't know if the ideas contest is, is a, a, some kind of evaluation because we have so many ideas every year we are uh, in last year it was the five of uh, the fifth uh, uh, edition and uh, every year uh, more ideas are submitted so it's a kind of evaluation of uh, people are uh, are awareness and they are um, they care about sustainable development. They are uh, committed with improving our performance with sustainability, uh, our, our, the performance of FILP. Okay, I don't know if if it is enough, uh, but we can study another ways to evaluate. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Sandra is still asking, and this is a question to both uh, universities, so to, to, to both speakers group, um, how are you inspiring other universities? So don't other or other faculties uh, follow the good examples that you have uh, mentioned? So from your processes, uh, what can you say? Do you... Could you, can you say if there were people who follow the good examples of your institutions or did? Is it for me? It's for both of you, you can. <laughs> okay. If you want to start, uh, you can start, uh, Carla. I, I would like <laughs> that, uh, for instance, the other faculties of the University of Porto uh, follows our example, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. I hope that I, we might inspire some uh, the management boards of the faculties and the director of the University of Porto. I think he is always uh, aware and uh, I think they are thinking about this <laughs> it's a, a beginning <laughs> and in fechter what would you say how um how my other institutions eventually get inspired by initiatives that you are doing for example the esd action week i think it's something quite uh, particular that i haven't heard so much yet from other universities that you uh, do the, 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 what falls in this field of qualification activities, no? that you are doing this kind of teacher training and uh, support even uh, lecturers who do not typically have maybe um, uh, classes that are normally associated to sustainability and that you could support them. So has this, that initiative already inspired others or 
any other things of that inspired other institutions? Well, it actually might have. <laughs> I'm not sure how, how we developed at um, other universities where we already talked about um, our activities. Um, certainly, we did have the luxury of this whole project setting and which allowed us to visit different universities uh, throughout the last couple of years and also um, hold governance workshops to like and and to evaluate our um, self appraisal tool that I talked about earlier and then also um, give some examples from our experience and also from the other universities that we got to know a bit better. And uh, so these workshops that we had uh, were certainly a great way to transport uh, the activities to, uh, to other universities and also discuss them in detail and not just say, hey, do this, do that, but uh, just see also how this might apply to their universities. And because, yeah, might need a bit of a different uh, concept, but uh, the general idea could be applied anywhere I guess so um, yeah I'm, I'm not sure I haven't seen direct results that I <laughs> could pray of now but um, yeah I'm sure we were able to deliver some of our ideas also um, yeah but Marco you have maybe. No, I just want to add one idea what I think is interesting about our example because we have many very advanced you know, not many we have a handful some universities in Germany which are quite ad advanced but which started like 10 20 years ago for example the University of Lüneburg which is like the sustainable university in Germany I mean there they started the process 20 years ago and so that is kind of frightening probably for other universities that want to start because then they well will we need 20 years and in University of Hechta, we only started like six years ago, but now we have a lot of activities already. We have a sustainability report. So I think that is somehow motivating for other universities that you do not need necessarily 20 years, that also in a shorter time and in a small university. And probably our university is also one of the universities which does not get so much funding. Uh, etc. Well, we had now the project that helped a lot, but but still, I mean, it is a small university with not so much resources, and still we we could have some. So I think that is interesting, and and many people in Germany wouldn't even know where Fechter is and where our university is <laughs> because it's so small and the city is so small and unknown. It's I don't know any Portuguese villages, but probably it would be the same like you're talking about a very small Portuguese city and nobody would know about. It. So, so I think that also is kind of interesting about that example that people then say, oh, well, I didn't even know that there's a university and well, now I, I'm interested in what's going on there. So for us, at least it helped also a lot of for, for yeah, creating uh, a, a different kind of, not only because it was unknown, but also because it is located in a region with which if people know it, they know it because it's quite unsustainable because it's the area of mass animal production in Germany. So it's one of the most unsustainable areas in Germany based on this idea of animal mass production. So I think that's also interesting for people to see that kind of, yeah, kind of uh, changing their idea of what Fechter is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And impacting the regions, huh? because there are several, so when, if anyone is interested in looking up the university website, so the, the university itself has many also initiatives dealing with the region and trying to influence having an impact on, on that. For example, the, the citizens uh, science shops is also another uh, interesting example of uh, engaging directly with the, with the community um, of the region and making bridges to the universities. Well, looking at the time, we are coming uh, to the end of our webinar. And I actually asked the speakers before to um, to prepare just a really short uh, sentence or a short statement um, on actually our topic. So what 
um, what really matters in sustainability uh, or for sustainability governance. And Akala already had finished in her presentation with some key factors, but nevertheless, I want to uh, ask the question to our three speakers. Uh, according to your personal opinion or eventually also a, a memorable um, experience you had during an interview or maybe a talk to with, with maybe the top board of your university or whatever. Uh, what is for you, uh, the, what are for you decisive uh, steps that can be taken to advance uh, sustainability governance or maybe one of the many that you mentioned, what, what would you consider is uh, one important aspect that you wish uh, to get more attention. And I eventually start with Mara <laughs> and we do the Mara, Anakala and leave the last word then to Marco. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, since we are like mostly probably also representatives of two uh, national networks uh, concerning um, or concerned with uh, sustainability at universities, um, which which is great. I guess uh, I think it's an amazing amazing idea to just um, have this exchange. But um, I would argue that this kind of network also needs to be established within each university or faculty who however big the university might be um, and that yeah so in order to have a, a solid structure of communication um, since yeah one experience from the interviews I, I conducted was um, yeah for instance when I talked to this one technical staff member and, and then later on to um, the, top management representative of the same university. Um, they both claimed to uh, want to do everything they could uh, in order to promote uh, sustainable development, uh, but both also claimed that the other person wouldn't uh, ever, like would never join or wouldn't be up for it at all. Or um, And um, so I was wondering, did they just tell me that um, because that's what I wanted to hear somehow, or um, is that really a problem that um, existed between them not communicating um, properly? And so uh, I guess those are the, the very small uh, steps that need to be taken um, to just have these ways of communication between the different status groups of the university. Thank you, thank you. Carla, can I also then can I direct this question to you? I would. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I, I have already mentioned some key factors of success. As, as I told before, uh, I think it's very important for the integration of sustainable development principles in higher education institutions the commitment, the support of the governance bodies for sustainability, I think it's crucial. Also, also the, the commitment must be reflected in the allocation of funding and the human resources to this area. I think the sustainable structure, sustainable office must be established. I think it's very important to have specific uh, human resources allocated to this task. Last but not least, I think is the engagement of the whole community with sustainability. It is necessary to raise community awareness for sustainable practices. Okay, it's my, my last statement. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and Marco. Well, there's not a lot to add, but perhaps I would like to try to summarize what also Mara was saying based on our interviews. I think we, what we found out is that sustainability governance is different at each university, but we could see that in all of the 11 universities that we analyzed, they had more uh, uh, success when there was a mixture of bottom up, bottom up processes, meaning engaged people, engaged researchers, students, etc. 
who really move the process forward. But on the other hand, also uh, um, top down in the sense of having a management, upper management that supports that process and that, as Anna Kala is saying, create structures. So for example, they helped us to create that sustainability working group. They gave us the space to, uh, to, to publish a first sustainability report. I mean, we did the work, but still the, the upper management uh, had to decide, yes, we want that sustainability report. So I think that is really important to have that mixture of engaged people, engaged student researchers, but also upper management that not only tolerates or accepts the pro uh, process, but really somehow supports the process. Because in the universities where they only tolerated, we could see, yeah, then things do not work as much if they only say, yeah, please do, but but don't, don't use too much of my time. In our case, really, we had many workshops, also in our university, many workshops where several members of the university board participated, not only one, sometimes five or all members of the university board participated at the same time in one workshop. And I think that helped us a lot also for creating that commitment. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent. Thank you very much to all to all of you uh, for your interesting uh, presentations and also sharing uh, all these uh, examples. Um, I think it was very uh, inspiring. There were also, I saw that Marco already shared also, I think the slides. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the recordings, uh, the recording of this webinar usually will also be uploaded in the YouTube channel, channel of uh, uh, of the network of the RCS, the Rede Kampf zu Stentavel. So if you go to our the website from the from the network you will uh, we then can find uh, the uh, recordings then there and yeah last but not least also thank you very much for the support of uh, Antonio Professor Antonio Gomes Martins because he helped with the enrollments and keeping up uh, us informed with uh, uh, having the links and uh, everything on time and yeah, if there are any further questions, please feel free also to contact uh, the, the network by email um, or us. And we hope that uh, we can stay in touch and hopefully all um, uh, promote, help promoting sustainability governance uh, wherever we are working in. And last but last, last but not least only I can wish us all lots of uh, strengths and health in these challenging times. Um, it was a pleasure for me um, to moderate today uh, this webinar and uh, wishing you still a, a con good continuation of, of this day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.